Welcome once again to People's Community Church. Our church, once again, we're open here to help to heal the hurting. We come once again to minister to you during this time and during this pandemic. Uh, so would you come in and pray with me? Oh, gracious God, we come once again to say thank you. Thank you to Heavenly Father for blessing us. We thank you for keeping us safe. We thank you for blessing all of our members. And once again, we ask you to go with us. In Jesus' magnificent name, we pray. Amen. We come up today, and our lesson text today is going to come from the Gospel of John. Very familiar scripture with a lot of you. Uh, today, it's coming from the Gospel of John, chapter 3. Only three verses, verses 1 through 3. Okay, my third verse uh, is the, my key verse. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. Let the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Uh, my title for my sermon today, once again, is Born from Above. Today, as we come looking to move out of this pandemic, and we come today to rely on science and all of their knowledge about what man knows and what man can do, uh, but we also come to look at the fact that 87,595 people have died in our country, and also we see that 36,000 people are out of work today. So we, we are living in very uncertain times. So today, we need something that we can really, really rely on. Now, if I were to come to you today and ask you to select a scripture, select a sermon, a once in a lifetime sermon that you would want to be preached in a situation like this, what, what scripture would you select? I'm glad I asked you that question because this is the scripture that we selected today. Uh, if a once in a lifetime sermon that if I had to preach, it would be from John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Uh, today I will teach about the truth that is too important to ignore. Today we become disciples of Christ, but in order to become disciples of Christ, we have to become new people. And in order to become new people, there is something that we have to do. So as we come to look at our lesson text today, uh, verse 1 said, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Now pay attention because in this lesson text, we're going to talk about something that's very important today because we see so many people that have elevated themselves in high position. So many people that hold high positions, but they don't really have a real relationship with God. And I think that's what we see today with a lot of our leaders and a lot of people that are trying to bring us information as we are sheltered in place and as we're going through life on life's terms. Uh, so but one thing we need to know, even though there are a lot of people out of work, there are a lot of people that everything is shut down. And one thing that I find to be very inter interesting today, every church is of the same size. Every pastor that I talk to are preaching to empty pews. So today we can't boast and brag about big churches or small churches or anything along that line. God has brought us to the point that all of his churches are the same once again. But the essence of our church is always the people and the essence of our church is our relationship with God. So that's what we want to look at today because there are a lot of people that's pressed down today. There are a lot of people that don't have any hope. But I come today to let you know you can have a new life. You can have new hope. You can have a new life in face of all of the downsizing pandemics and stock market. A lot of things that people used to brag on, can't brag on them today. Stock market crashing, business closing, a lot of things that, that we used to hold dear, near and dear to our heart. God has brought us back to the basics, and that is our relationship with him. So that's very important today that we look at that and we examine that as we have time on our hand. So we look at this man, Nicodemus. Uh, they say that there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Now, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Now, a Pharisee was the people that had been given the authority to interpret the scripture. The Pharisees held themselves in high positions, in high esteem. 
they were supposed to be the most learned people in all of Israel. But not only was Nicodemus a Pharisee, because the Pharisee ministered to the common people and the Sadducee ministered to the aristocrats, but we see here that the Pharisees was the largest group, the largest group of all of them. And Nicodemus was the leader of the Pharisees. He was the master teacher of the Pharisees. But not only was he a Pharisee, they say, they say also he was a ruler. That meant that he was on the Sanhedrin Council. The Sanhedrin Council was made up of Pharisees and Sadducees, but the Sanhedrin Council was the supreme court of the land. So, so not only was Nicodemus the leader of the Pharisees, but this man was on the supreme court. So we see that we're dealing with a person who here is very important, a person who society has elevated to high position. So, but Nicodemus being the master teacher, the master interpreter of all of the, the laws dealing with Judaism and Nicodemus being the master teacher, but Nicodemus realized, and this is what I like about Nicodemus because there's not a lot of leaders that would do this. Nicodemus realized that deep down in his sanctified soul, there was something missing. There was something he didn't have. When he got up to teach and when he got up to, to, to preach and when he got to serve on the Supreme Court on the, with the 71 other priests on the Sanhedrin Council, Nicodemus realized that there was something missing. And you know it's bad when you're in leadership and when you have given all of this authority and you realize deep down in your sanctified soul that there is something missing. There's something that I don't have. And all of a sudden, in verse 2 it says, he came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no one can do these miracles that thou doeth except God be with him. Now he comes to Jesus by night. And this is very important because uh, a lot of people try to make a lot about him coming to Jesus by night. But it's very simple. He was ashamed to talk with Jesus during the day because he was supposed to have all this knowledge. Uh, but you see, it, when a person has to descend from the teacher to become the pupil, then sometimes that causes us to be ashamed of things. See, see, Nicodemus saw something in Jesus. He saw something in Jesus that he knew that he didn't have. But, but, but being a man of God, being a man to realize that the things that he saw in Jesus, the miracles and things that he saw in Jesus, nobody could do these things except he be sent by God in the teachings that he heard Jesus teach. And you, and you see, there is a thing about in antiquity, and that's why it comes to call Jesus rabbi, which means master. He comes and calls you. Now, he's supposed to be the master teacher, but he comes and calls Jesus master. Because he realized Jesus' interpretation and Jesus' teaching of scripture was one of authority. That one that, that nobody else could deal with but Jesus. So Nicodemus come, but he realized something that was true about Jesus. Understanding all of the stuff in Judaism. Understanding that Jesus was really from God. Because it says right here. He said, no one can do these things except he's sent by, except he's sent by God. Because in antiquity, in order to be a teacher... In order to stand up and do the things, in order to be respected, then you had to speak the words that God would put in your mouth. These were no teachers that could just hop up and, and, and not be trained and not do anything. These were people that had to be trained. And Nicodemus realized that although he was the master teacher, but he saw Jesus doing some things and teaching some things that he knew that he didn't have. And he knew that he couldn't do. So, so he comes to Jesus at night and he says, Master, Master. He said, Master, we know that thou art a teacher that comes from God. I know you come from God. He said, there's no doubt in my mind. I don't care what. And he said, we, because he had been talking to all his other Pharisees and Sadducees and people about Jesus. And he said, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. He said, we know. Because the miracles. See, 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 miracles is God's intervention in the natural order of things for the sake of a believer. 
See, see, Jesus' miracles was his calling card that God had given him to come to earth. So if you wanted to, if, if I was working for a company and I came to you and I gave you my calling card, then it would give you my name and the name of my company. But see, Jesus' calling card was his miracles that God had given him. And you see, when, when, when miracles come into our lives, and sometimes we may get sick, sometimes we may have cancer, but all that kind of stuff. But the natural progression of those things, God has the power to stop them. Just like the natural progression of this COVID-19, God has the power to stop it. God has the power to reverse it. But we have to, be, we have to believe that. So Nicodemus comes, and he comes at night. And he comes because he realized now that he has to come down from his role as a teacher. And he comes has to come down now to be in the, in the position of a student. And you know, that's a big drop for a lot of teachers. Every time I stand up and teach a class, I also come to learn from the people that I teach. But there are a lot of teachers that don't do that. A lot of people, oh, I know everything. I know everything. So you can, I come to teach you. But, but you, it has to be both ways. So, so Nicodemus comes now as a pupil. And he comes to the master teacher, the show enough master teacher. And he says, I know you come from God. We know you come from God because we have seen the things that you do. We have seen the miracles. We have seen the things that you have done. The, we, we, we have seen you feeding the 5,000. We saw you stop the widow at Nam and, sent, and raise her son from the dead. We, we, we saw all of these things that, that you were able to do. And I know in order for you to do these things, you had to come from God. And he said, and he said except God be with you. He said, God got to be with you. And that's why I come to you at night. Now, now, Jesus doesn't prolong or doesn't get into no long uh, dialogue with Nicodemus because he realized Nicodemus' problem. Just like we realize so many people's problems today is that are so depressed because so many people have lost their jobs, so many people, uh, their bank accounts and stock markets has crashed and all of the things that's going on in life. And we see domestic violence increasing because people are sheltered within more children are being abused than was ever abused before. And we see all of these things happening today because we now have to be still and look at ourselves and see who we are. But I just stopped by to let you know today that you can have a new life. You can have a new beginning. So Jesus looks at Nicodemus, and Jesus didn't even get into answering these questions about Nicodemus. Jesus goes straight to the problem. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now Jesus answered and said, verily, verily, in other words, truly, truly, in other words, he said this twice because he said, Nicodemus, regardless of everything that I say, I need your undivided attention right now. I need to get your attention. I need everything that I've said so far, but I, I want you to realize I'm about to say the most important thing to you right now. I'm about to answer your question that you didn't even ask, but I'm about to feed your soul because I know what a person needs in their heart. And so Jesus now goes and says, verily, verily, give me your undivided attention. I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus is letting Nicodemus know, except you be born again, except you come from the first Adam, but now you have to be born from the second Adam. I understand that you have a sin nature. I understand that you come now thinking a certain way. I understand all of those thorns and weeds that's in your head, and I got to purge them out. But you got to have a new life. You got to have a new being. He say, except you now surrender yourself and say that Jesus is the Christ and God raised him from the dead and believe that God can save you. You have to have a new beginning. You got to be able to come into God's kingdom with a new beginning. He say, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. So see, the things that you are concerned about, Nicodemus, is that you need to have a place into the kingdom of heaven. You need to have a relationship with Almighty God. I know you're the master teaching all of that stuff right now, but, but, but there is no relationship that you have with God. So, so as you become from being the teacher to the pupil, you have to understand now that you need this relationship with God. And unless you come now to be able to come into God's kingdom, he said, you won't even be able to see the kingdom 
unless you come into the God's kingdom the right way. So we all need to do that today. All of us who are sheltered in, all of us who don't have a relationship with God out there today, all of us, in order to have this new beginning, in order for God to bless you, in order for you to be put into God's kingdom so God can give you his provision, his protection, and his prosperity. God wants to take you into his kingdom. And I'm not talking about going to heaven. I'm talking about his kingdom right here on earth. God wants to bless you right where you are. But the main thing we do have to do now is start a new beginning. We have to put on the new man that's built in righteousness. We have to put on the new man that God is calling us to be. So that's what he told Nicodemus. Nicodemus, you got to have a new start. You got to have a new beginning. So as we close today, we want you to understand if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Now, all things you, that you have look new. When you come into Christ, all of your old stuff, all of the things that you've done have passed away. He said, now you put on Christ. And when you put on Christ, you're going to put on this new life that we're going to offer you. But man must be renewed in his mind. Our minds must be renewed in order for us to get rid of all of that stinking thinking and all of the stuff that we are going through today. So as I close today, I just want you to understand one thing. That was a family, a Caucasian family, that had adopted a little African-American boy when he was a child, when he was an infant. They adopted him as an infant. And the lady called me because she saw me on TV doing a program on fair housing. And she wanted to know what should be done in order for her to raise this little African-American boy in her culture context. And I told her one thing. I said, you can raise him in your culture context uh, he can learn all of your ways and all of your in all of your environments and you can give him everything you want to give him. But there's one thing about him that would never change. His birth, the way he was born. He was born as an African-American. And any time he fill out any government forms, he's going to have to go back to his birth identity. And that's the thing that you have to always understand, that he has a birth identity. And that's what we need to have today. In order to go on through all of this trouble and all of the culture and all of the collapsing that's around us, we have to have a birth identity. And with my birth identity coming into the kingdom of God, that, that, that's why I'm not worried today. That's why I can be like Nicodemus, because I have seen the workings of God in my life. I have seen God move mountains in my life. So, so that's what I'm not worried, because I saw what he did with the swine flu. I saw what he did with scars. I saw what he did with the West Nile virus. I saw what he did with AIDS. I saw what he did with Ebola. And I just stopped by to let you know that God is still on the throne and God is still in control. And God is not worried about this pandemic. This pandemic didn't catch him off God. But God is still on char in charge. And I saw something. And that's why I can still trust him. And that's why you all be able to trust him today because your birth identity is not going to change if you have had this second birth. If you had lined up in the kingdom of God, God is going to protect you. God is going to take care of you and God is going to give you his prosperity. Those are things that's part of you being saved, part of your salvation package. Hallelujah. As we go, let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for your word today. We thank you to Heavenly Father for us being born from above. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that indwells us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that guides us and protects us as we go through life. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask you to continue to bless us and go with us. In Jesus' magnificent name, we pray. Amen. Before I go, if there's anyone out there that don't have a relationship with Almighty God, God as your Father, Jesus as your big brother, you can call our church, area code 630-790-5590, and we can help you to line up with Almighty God. If you ever needed a savior, you need one today. God bless you and God keep you. Amen.